Hey GED students, it's GED question of the daytime. And luckily we have a straightforward problem. They tell us exactly what we want today. It says find the volume of the solid below. So we know what we're doing. We're finding volume. And we can see our little three-dimensional solid below. Okay? So um, now if you've never done volume before, I would not start with this problem. Fair warning for you, turn this one off, go take a look at some simpler volume problems like volume of a rectangular solid or volume of a cylinder. This is actually one of my more challenging volume problems, not because it's actually that hard, but because of the way the GED formula sheet is written. I'm gonna do this with the formula sheet and the formula that they give uh, for this particular shape confuses students. So let's talk about it. What kind of a shape shape is this? So the first thing that I want you to notice is that I have matching bases. On either side of this shape, I have this matching triangle shape, two matching bases. And then you can see that I go directly from base to base here, and it might not look at it because of the distortion, but I'm going directly from this base to base at a right angle. Okay, whenever you have two bases and you go directly from base to base at a right angle, you have what's known as a right prism. Right prism. Now there's different kinds of right prisms as it turns out, like um, rectangular prisms or right prisms. Um, uh, cylinders um, really fall under the branch of right prism. A cylinder you know, has two circles on either end and goes uh, at a 90 degree angle from circle to circle base. Um, but those uh, types of prisms have specific formulas on the GED formula sheet. This, this particular right prism, which would be a triangular prism, there is no triangular prism on the GED formula sheet. If you look under volume, you won't find one for triangular prism. So your only option is going to be to use the volume of a right prism formula. And the volume of a white right prism formula is interesting because it actually has a capital letter. You're going to see it says V is equal to capital BH. A lot of students just make the mistake of assuming that a capital B means the same as a little b in math class and it doesn't so write this down I suggest writing it right on your formula sheet big B means area of the base shape turns out you can find the volume of any rectangular prism by first taking the area of the base shape in this case it would be a triangle so imagine I'm it's like I'm covering that triangle with squares finding out how many squares to cover and then multiplying that by the height of the prism. The height of the prism is the distance from base shape to base shape, okay? So uh, the big B is the area of the base. The H here is the height of the prism, which is the distance from base to base. I'm writing all this down. I'm going to take, this problem will take me a little longer than most of my questions of the day because it is a little complex. Okay, so what this means, this capital B really means for us is that we're gonna have a two-step problem. The first thing I'll do is find the area of the base shape, and then once I find the area of the base shape, the big B, I'll plug that into the area formula. So let's do that. Let's come over here and let's find B, the area of the base shape. So what is the base shape? Well, I called this guy a tri triangular prism because the base is a triangle. So the base shape here is a triangle. So what I'm gonna have to do first is find the area of just this triangle. So I'm gonna ignore the rest of the prism and I'm gonna pretend like the only thing I'm looking at is just this triangle and I'm gonna find its area, the number of squares to cover. So looking at my GED formula sheet, I'm gonna have to look at it again if I don't have it memorized, I'm going to look up the area of the triangle formula, and that is A equals one half little b base, which is a side, times little h height. Now remember, we're talking area of the triangle. So when I talk about the b here, I'm talking about the base of the triangle. And when I talk about the h here, I'm talking about the height of the triangle. So now let's plug into that. Area is equal to one half. The base of the triangle is the side the side that is 
perpendicular to the height. So base and height on a triangle always make this T around the right angle. So my base will be six, and my height of my triangle of my triangle is four. Great. Again, it, you might want to go back and review the triangle area videos if you've never done that before. So a half of six is three, and three times four, of course, is just 12. So what I just figured out is that the area of this triangle, the number of squares to cover this triangle would be 12. And that is the big B that I needed. So now I'm gonna take that number and my second step will be to plug that into the volume of the prism formula. So now I'm looking at the entire prism. So I'm gonna do volume is equal to area of the base shape is what I just figured out, that's 12. And now this is height of the prism, of the prism. And remember we said the height of the prism is the distance from base to base. So this is the height of the prism right here, the 15. And that's tricky, tricky to have an H in both formulas, and yet I'm talking about height of a triangle is different than the height of a prism. Okay, so 12 times 15, you know it's almost the end of the work week because I have no idea what 12, there we go, my TI helped me. 12 times 15 is 180. Um, and now, of course, this is volume, so 180 what? 180 cubic centimeters. Okay, wonderful. We found the volume of a right prism. Again, it was a two-step process. First, you have to find the area of the base shape using whatever formula is appropriate, and then you can multiply that by the height of the prism. Uh, excellent. If you have any questions about this or any other GED math topic, be sure to drop it in the comments, and I'll do my best to answer it.